Hi guys, so I wanna talk a little bit today about heart rate sensors. I see them being used all the time in the gym or when people are out doing uh, event training, marathon training, that kind of stuff. I see people kind of using them almost to, to look back at a session and congratulate themselves on how hard they worked or just to see that they did a lot of work and, and not really do anything with the data. Whereas actually this time of year, especially if you're training for something like we are with the rat race events over summer or something even further away than that, uh, if you're doing the Boehm Half Marathon in October, there's a couple of different session plans and session structures that you can use the heart rate monitor with that's gonna give you a really, really good training effect, help get you nice and fit in this period of the year and help keep you injury free, which is gonna be the most important thing. So this, this time of year, if you're looking at doing a lot of road work and starting to build up your mileage, you're best off to do steady state work in the green zone. If you look at the, the, the read off here on screen, if you're trying to stay for long periods of time in the green zone, it lets you build up a good amount of mileage. You don't have to run really, really fast to get into this heart rate zone. So we're keeping our risk of injury fairly low. So it's just really nice steady state work. It shouldn't feel too strenuous. And you're going up to about 75, maybe 80% of your maximum heart rate and trying to stay there for long periods of time running at, running at a constant speed. Now, if we're doing interval-based work this time of year, we want to keep it fairly long intervals, about seven minutes on, two minutes off, four minutes on, two minutes off, these kind of long intervals, but they're still short enough that we can really start to push into high percentage of heart rates. So if you look on the, the readout on screen, it's pushing up into the yellow zone, pushing up into the red zone, so we're always above 80% of our maximum heart rate. Now, this is hard. If you're going to run fast enough to, to put your heart rate in these zones, you're going to have to run pretty fast. And that's when you start exposing yourself to injury risk, especially if your body isn't used to doing a huge amount of miles at the moment. So this kind of long interval based work, is best reserved for the rowing machine, it's best reserved for bikes, cross trainers, assault bikes, these kind of bits of kit where you can work really, really hard with little to no impact and keep your injury risk low and still develop high levels of fitness that you can then use to apply to your running later on in the year. So again, 60 to 75 percent heart rate these kind of continuous zones this session is done over about 40 minutes really really nice and, and, and effective if we're doing our on feet work so this is where you should be getting out getting your mileage up getting your running done on the roads starting to build up mileage but not actually working too hard nice and low injury risk ability to build up a lot of work over a long period of time looking at some long intervals so this is six reps four minutes on two minutes off and you can see for each four minute block the heart rate starts to go above 80 percent so we can work really, really nice and hard here. We can start to push a lot more. But for this time of year, these kind of sessions where we're working in long intervals when pushing the heart rate above 80%, are best save for the bike, for the rowing machine, for the cross trainer. Keeps our injury risk to a minimum by getting rid of a lot of impact. And we're not putting a lot of stress through the muscles of the lower body. And that kind of session structure is echoed again here. So we're working even harder. We're doing seven minutes on, eight minutes on. We're doing two minutes off. And this is all done on a rowing machine. So you can see each red bar is a minute where the heart rate is above 90%. So we're working really, really, really hard here. But again, if you do this on feet, if you run fast enough to get your heart rate into these zones, you're really putting yourself at risk of injury. So it's best off keeping these sessions off feet for now while you use the continuous steady state work for your on feet mileage. This is a slightly different app, but you can see this is what's called tempo training. So we're using short reps. We're running really, really fast but we're only doing it to the point where the heart rate starts to go up and get towards this 80%. As soon as the heart rate gets to 80%, stop, rest, let it come back down again, and then we go again. So what we can do here is keep our heart rate in the right zone. We're keeping it in between that kind of 70 and 80%. We're building up the right fitness for this time of year, but we're doing it in a way that allows us to actually start training the muscles of the lower body to tolerate impact as well. So this is what's called tempo training. So there you can see every time that line spikes, we're running, and every time that line goes back down, we're resting. So spike, rest, spike, rest. And it lets us get the best of both worlds. We really start to develop the right kind of aerobic fitness we need, but equally it allows us to start building up a really good amount of uh, high-speed running, and that really starts to injury-proof the body if done in the right way. So tempo training is a really nice tool as well. It's more applicable really for sportsmen and women who are doing things like football, things like rugby. But this time of year, it's a really nice general training tool that gives you a little bit of variety in your sessions. So we can see from the readout on screen, all we're doing is running a short distance of time for maybe 20, 30 seconds. 
till our heart rate goes up almost to 80% and then we stop and we rest. If we're constantly going through this green zone from like 70 to 80% up and down, up and down, our heart rate essentially stays at an average of 75%, but we're actually running at a speed that would normally be associated with 85 or 90%. So we're almost getting a lot of high speed running in, but we're keeping the heart rate where we need it to develop the right fitness this time of year. And it's a really, really powerful training tool, breaks up the monotony of training a little bit and just gives you something different to do. Thank <laughs> you.